So what does that mean about the two things? They're either both, both positive, positive both or they are both negative, right? Now, here's where I wasn't thinking clearly. Tell me about sine squared. It's always positive. This is always positive because I'm squaring it, it's always greater than or equal to zero. So this case, I can immediately rule out because sine squared is never going to be negative. So I am not going to have a negative negative. Furthermore, this is always positive. So if I'm looking at a unit circle, Anywhere on that circle, sine squared will be a bigger, will be positive. Sine squared will be bigger than positive on the whole, or bigger than zero on the whole circle. So where is cosine bigger than root two over two? Well, here's where it's equal to root two over two. You already figured that out. Isn't this where cosine is bigger than, I want bigger than, both positive? Isn't that where cosine's bigger than root two over two? So what's my answer? Remember, this is the whole circle. So this is my answer. So it's zero to pi over four, and then seven pi over four to two pi. That's the correct answer to the problem. If you look at my work, you can see that I um, made the sign instead of sine squared, and that changed it up to sine squared. That's what I factored out in sine squared. Yep, there we go. Okay, that was my mistake. Anybody find another one, maybe? I mean, I'm not, there could be more. I don't have a mistake, I just had a question. Mm -hmm. Could you do 10B? Yeah, it could be a mistake. I mean, too. Who knows? 10B. This one is similar, except it's an equation, not an inequality. So I don't have to worry about the shading and all that stuff. Now, what are the directions? Okay, so. about tangent squared. Well, I can't really do the 
problem. I mean, I can subtract this over, but there's no factoring or anything I could do. The problem is I've got a secant and a tangent, and I really would like to have all the same function. So you need to know that one plus tangent squared is secant squared. So what is that tangent squared? What can I replace this with? minus 1. That's the key. You want to get your function to be the same. So secant squared minus 1. Now I've got 2 secant squared minus 3 secant minus 2. So I distributed the 2 and brought this over. got my equation equal to 0 because it's quadratic. And then what will I do? Factor it. Double check my factoring. I think that's right. So what does that mean? That means secant equals negative one half, or secant equals two. Is that right? Now you do this however you want. Personally, I don't deal well with secants, so I'm gonna think of this as cosine is negative two, and cosine is one half. And then I'm gonna ditch that one, because why? Cosine can never be bigger than, or less than negative one, right? So that's out. But the cosine can be a half. Where does that happen? Where is the cosine a half? Pi over three and pi pi over three. And here we are. Let me see, is that what I got when I did this? Yep, good, okay. That answer, everybody follow all that? All right, what else do we need to do? What else, Addie? We do 10C. 10C. Now, this is, I need a calculator for this one because you'll see why. Maybe you already know why. What, how am I going to start this? There's no trickery here. What am I going to do with it right off the bat? Factor it. So it's going to be 4 sine and 2 sine. How's that factoring look? Does that seem okay? Now, here's why you need a calculator. You don't need a calculator for this one. This one's going to say sine equals negative one half. That we can do without a calculator. But what does this one say? Sine equals negative one fourth. And that is not one of my special numbers, so I'm going to need a calculator for that one. Let's go ahead and do this one without. What is x equal? The sine is negative one half. We're down at the bottom of the circle. It's a pi over six angle. So seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. Now, if you did those decimally, that's fine. It says use calculators, that's fine. But those would be the exact answers for that factor. Now, won't, here's my circle, won't these, be in kind of the same spot. I just don't know what the angle is. So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to press what? Second sine negative 0.25. Oh my. It's negative 0.253. Now, Remember, these were the directions. So negative 0.253 is not going to work, right? These are the directions. So the calculator gave me this angle right here. I am going to need this angle right here. Would you agree with that? So I will simply add 2 pi. 
6.031 is the green angle. How will I find the red angle? That's the other one I need, which is all the way around to here. How will I find the red one? Pi plus 0.253, positive 0.253. So pi plus 0.253. That one is 3.395. And it looks like I didn't even finish that one. So good thing we just did it. Okay, Abby, does that make sense to you? Yeah. All right. Who else found something that we need to look at? Yep. Can we do number six? Six. talking about the one that says in the xy plane the angle theta or you have my six on six the front, on the front. of the cosecant. What's one over cosecant? Sine. sine. And what's one minus sine squared? Cosine squared. So that would be one option. Another option would be to take note of the numerator. You have an identity that says one plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So what do I really have up here on the top? What's cosecant squared minus one? Cotangent squared? So this is cosine squared over sine squared over one over sine squared. <coughs> These are going to cancel, and you're going to be left with just cosine squared. So a couple of different options there. It's whatever occurs to you as you look at the problem. All right, who else found something on this mega review sheet? sketching a um, cosecant. Everybody has his or her, you know, own preference. If I'm sketching a cosecant, I'm going to first of all sketch the, the equivalent sign. Okay? So remember what a sine curve looks like? There's no shifting in this problem at all, vertically or horizontally. So I'm going to start right at the origin, which is where my signs start. It is negative, so it's going to go down and then up because it's upside down. It has an amplitude of 2. Ooh, well, maybe it should be bigger than this, but that's okay. The period is supposed to be 2 pi, 
but I put that coefficient in there. So now the period is actually a pi, which means this is four, two, six. Now, are you with me on that, Julia? Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it into a cosecant. I need the reciprocal of this. So since these are zeros, their reciprocal will be undefined. So the cosecant will always have asymptotes wherever the sign has zeros. And then I'll just put my curve. So what did it need to know? Just the picture? There it is, the red. The red is the picture. x over 3 is the angle whose cosine is negative root 3 over 2. Well, let's figure this out first. Okay, this says the angle, the angle whose cosine is negative root 3 over 2. Remember, with this notation, you are limited to 0 to pi. So the answer to this is going to be here somewhere. Okay? Is it going to be over here? What angle is that? 5 pi over 6. So the, the angle whose sine is x over 3 is 5 pi over 6. Now at this point, if you're really in tune, you're going to say it's not possible. Because what does this notation tell you? Yes, that's exactly right. This notation says that whatever I get, it has to be over here. And it's not. So there's no answer. Does that make sense? This is all about you remembering your principal values. Inverse cosine, top half of the circle. Inverse sine and tangent, right half of the circle. Good, good, good. Okay, who else? Yep. Um, can you do 16D? Yep, let's see, 16D. This is kind of like a problem that we did earlier in that it isn't possible to do it without changing something. Did you notice as you looked at the problem that this is a 2x and this is a regular x? That is bad news. It's like having the secant squared and the tangent. You can't do it. So what do we know about cosine 2x? Well, there's three little versions of that identity. One of them is cosine squared minus sine squared. But since this problem has a cosine squared already built into it, let's use the version that is 2 cosine squared minus 1. This is one of the forms of cosine 2x. <coughs> if your problem has a 2x and an x, change the 2x. Use your formula and change the 2x. There's no factoring, there's no subtracting, there's nothing. You must change the 2x. All right, so now I've got 18 cosine squared minus 9. Nine cosine squared four and a half. So nine cosine squared equals four and a half. Cosine.
square root, I have to remember to take b plus and minus. So what angles, are we still between 0 and 2 pi? Yeah. What angles have a cosine of plus or minus root 2 over 2? All the pi over 4. Yeah. Everybody okay with that? All right, who else? These are great questions. Good, good, good practice. What else? Yep. 22. 22. 22 is a calculator problem, and I didn't write that on your paper. I wrote it on mine and thought that was good enough. It wasn't. So sorry. Yeah, 22 is going to be a calculator problem. So let's see. You're going to just do the basic math. So 2.7 secant equals negative 7.1. And then secant equals negative 71 over 27. Then 77.1 over 2.7. And again, we're back here to the secant thing. And I don't work very well that way. So I'm going to change the cosine. Is everybody with the program here? Okay, now what is this saying? I know this is kind of confusing, but doesn't it literally say the cosine of something is negative 27 71? So the something, whatever it is, think of this right now, think of that as like a theta. The cosine of theta is negative 27 71. Doesn't that angle have to be over here somewhere on that part of the circle? Okay, I don't know what that angle is, but I'm going to figure it out by doing second, first, second cosine negative 27 71st. I got 1.961. Did everybody get that? Now, there's another one down here, though. Remember, there were two places. What would that angle be? Well, if this one is positive 1.961, wouldn't this one be negative 1.961? But I can't use a negative, so I need the positive version of that. So I need to go start here and get all the way around to here. How could I do that? How could I get that? Just sub, sub, either, either add negative 1.961 to 2 pi or to 2 pi minus that. I got 4.322. So would you agree that the two angles that have a cosine of negative 27 something points are these two angles right here? So 3 minus 0.4x 
equals 1.961 or 3 minus 0.4x equals 4.322. Because remember, it wasn't a theta, it was all of this. So that's the angle. So if I take this guy right here, 1.961, and subtract 3, and divide by negative 0.4, I get an X value for this one of 2.598 if I did that math right. Yeah. And then if I do the same thing here, 4.322 minus 3 divided by negative 0.4. Whoops, I have a problem here. What's my problem? Where does X have to be? between zero and two pi? Is that one between zero and two pi? So there's your answer. Right, does that, all that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. The only reason you needed a calculator on this problem is because this isn't root three over two. If that had been root 3 over 2, you could have done this problem without a calculator. But it was something weird, so that's why we needed it. There's nothing different about the problem or difficult about the problem. All right, what else? Good question. What else? Yes, I have to pass right there. Addie, you have a 7 on the front. You have a 7 on the front? Again, there's different strategies that you can use on this, um, but one thing you can do is get a lot of different functions involved here. So you can think of them all in terms of sines and cosines if you want. That's always an option. So this would be 1 over sine divided by sine over 1 minus cosine over sine divided by sine over cosine. Okay, so if you think about you're dividing by fractions, if you think about inverting and multiplying, Addie, would you agree that this one would become one over sine squared? And then this one, remember you're dividing, so you're inverting and multiplying, this one would be cosine squared over sine squared? Which is kind of nice because they already have a common denominator. So now we have 1 minus cosine squared over sine squared. Wait a minute, what's 1 minus cosine squared? sine squared over sine squared, so that's just going to be 1. Now again, there's always different ways to, to go about it, but if you are confused, one option is to change it all in the sines and cosines. There's like the basic building blocks. All right, what else? Root 27. This could be another calculator problem, so I didn't tell you. <coughs> All right, so 2 plus 3.1 cotangent, 0.3x plus 5, 
and I want this to equal negative six. Okay, so I'll do just my basic math. So 3.1 cotangent will equal negative eight and cotangent then will be 80 over 31 negative eight over 3.1, is that okay? Cotangent, don't do that, so I'm gonna make this a tangent. So the tangent is negative 31 over 80. So this is kind of like, it's exactly like that other one we did. I don't know what this is, the tangent of some angle is negative 31 80th. That's why I need a calculator. I have no idea what this angle is. But I know where it is. Where is it going to be located if its tangent is a negative number? Over here somewhere? Over here somewhere? Tangent y over x? So if I go to my calculator and second tangent, negative 31 80s, it's gonna give me this angle right here, which is negative 0.370, straight off my calculator. The directions, are zero to two pi again. So I better rethink that. So how could I rethink that? What would be the measure of the positive version of that angle? Two points. Yeah, so I'll just add that value. So 5.914, so 5.914 is one option. And then what about the second quadrant option? Now be careful, if that's 3.370, this part's 0.370, right? So I'll do pi minus 0.370. and it's 2.772. Now we aren't done, but I need everybody to be caught up with this here. We were finding some angle out there that had a tangent of negative 31 80ths. So we have now figured out what that angle is. But in the problem, the angle was called 0.3x plus five. So 0.3x plus 5 has to be either 5.914 or 2.772. And then I'll solve for x by subtracting 5 and dividing by 0.3. Now, make sure First one, I got 3.047. And for this one, I got negative 7.427. Now, assuming I did all that right, those would be the answers to the question, but not this one. Because where does x have to be? Between zero and 6.28, decimally speaking. Okay, all right, what else? <coughs> Anybody else? Have a question? Come on, we got time. Do two more. 
14A is a tangent graph. Before I graph it, however, what do I need to do? I got to get my equation cleaned up. What do I need to do? Take out the Yeah, you got to get that 4 out of there so you know what the phase shift is. So I'll take out the 4 and I'll be left with x minus pi over 24. Okay, now before I start, I'm going to refresh my memory. What does a tangent look like? A normal tangent, just a regular old tangent, has asymptotes at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 and squiggles up through the origin. That's what I'm starting with. I've done a couple of things. First of all, it's going to be moved up one, which means that that point right there of inflection will now be somewhere on this line. And everything has shifted to the right, pi over 24. So the origin, this point right here, the zero of the tangent, is now over here at pi over 24. There's an asymptote over here and an asymptote over here. And normally, those asymptotes would be pi apart. But now, those asymptotes are going to be pi over 4 apart. Which means this distance is pi over 4. Do not... Start here and add pi over 4. Uh-uh. What are you going to add? Pi over 8. Because the whole thing's pi over 4. So I'm going to add pi over 8, which is 3 24ths. So where's that going to put me? I'm already I'm at 1 24th. I'm going to add 3. So I'm at 4 24ths for pi over 6. And then I'm going to back up 3 24ths, so I'll be at negative 1 12th, negative 2 24ths. It's positive, but it has a multiplier of 2. So normally, halfway in between my 0 and my asymptote, I'd be up 1. Not this time, I'm going to be up. So our curve is going to look like that. It's going to be a little straighter than that. quiz is no calculator except for one problem and you know what that one problem is going to look like right it's going to be one of those equations like we've done we have to solve it and you need your calculator to help you find the angle otherwise it's no calculator all right so what else So this is a simplified secant pi over 2 minus theta. Now, you do not have in your pile of 
things to know that you don't have a formula for the secant of an angle minus an angle. However, you do have a formula for the cosine of an angle minus an angle. So if we think of this as one over cosine, then we'll go ahead and find the cosine of pi over two minus theta. We'll figure out what that is using our identity, our formula, and then we'll put one over it and that will be our answer. Okay, so uh, what's the formula for cosine angle minus angle? Cosine, cosine. Well, sine, sine, good, good, perfect, beautiful. Okay, pi over two, straight up. What's the cosine at pi over two? I'm just gonna figure out what this is. Cosine of pi over two is zero. So this is like gone, right? What's the sine of pi over two? One. So isn't this just, doesn't this thing just equal sine theta? Now that isn't the answer though. Remember, we have to do one over that. So the answer is one over sine theta, which is cosine. One more review thing for you to do on your own if you wish. I haven't done this yet, but I will try to get it done and post and have the answers posted in school with you for you. Don't worry about playing the little game. It's another one of those little gamey things from Health Meta. Um, but you know how to do the talk. You figure out how to do the talk. Started on the same sheet you are. 